So now we know where to write the code and how do we run it. So basically we can use a simple notepad where you can type the code and then you can use a interpreter on your terminal to run the code. Here's the thing. When you build software, it's not just about writing code, it's also about debugging it. So debugging basically means removing the bugs from the application. Uh, maybe there's something which you want it to work and because of some issue you're getting weird output or it's not running. I should get some sleep. <laughs> so you have to debug it. Next, maybe you want to create documentation. Next, maybe you want to create a package so that you can deploy it on the cloud. So all these things should be at one place. And that's where IDE comes to the picture, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. Now, especially for Python, we got a lot of different IDs available. The most famous one is VS Code. Okay, when I say most famous is because VS Code can be used to work with multiple languages. Like we got JavaScript, C, C Sharp, uh, CSS, TypeScript, Python, Java, and list goes on. I mean, of course, you can't see that here, but uh, it's, it's great. And it is built by Microsoft, but now it is open source. Not what I mentioned, but yeah, it is open source. Now, when you go to VS Code here, this is their website. So you can see it says your code editor redefined with AI. So that, that's right, we, with the latest trend in the AI, you can use AI for development and it works. That's important. Okay, so that's VS Code. Apart from this, we got one more. In fact, there are multiple, but then this is also famous, which is PyCharm. Now, PyCharm is built by JetBrains. Now, if you have no idea what JetBrains is, this is a company who makes tools for the developers and they have amazing tools for different languages, for different uh, work. So if I go to JetBrains, this is their website and this is a tool. But apart from PyCharm, which is specifically for Python, if you click here, developer tools, we have multiple options here. Now you can choose your language and I'm sure they might be having some tool for that. Okay, so this is uh, PyCharm only ID you need for web development, data, AI, ML, and supercharge with AI enhanced. And I'm a big fan of JetBrains tools. You know, this is not a paid stuff. I mean, not a paid promotion, but yeah, there's one thing bad. Okay, I can't say bad, it's just that if you want to use great things, you have to pay for it. So this is PyCharm, and if you, they, they give you two options. Now PyCharm is better than VS Code, if you go for the first option, which is the paid one. So the PyCharm paid software, which is they call Pro, is amazing. There's no competition between VS Code and PyCharm paid version. But if you don't want to pay, then you have to use the community version, which is great, but it lack features. Now, if you go down, uh, in fact, if you click on download here, you can see there are two versions. One is PyCharm, which is unified product. I will come back to unified in some time. And there is PyCharm community version. Now, if you don't want to pay for it, you can go for the community version. You can click on download, free. But now, in the earlier days, they used to have only PyCharm, I think, or Pro, where you have to pay for it. But now, uh, you get this unified product where you have a combination of a Pro and community version. So for the first one month, you will get it all the features, but after one month, they will stop some of the features and uh, you will get to know once you use that. So don't worry, we are going to use VS Code most of the time and maybe we'll try to explore PyCharm in between. And maybe intentionally I will do that is because you should not be dependent on an IDE, but you should know all the IDEs. Okay, that's, a, that's the problem. And that's a good, that's a fun actually, not a problem. That's a fun thing. Uh, apart from this, we have one more, which is Jupyter. Now, people, especially in the AI ML world, they explore Jupyter like anything. But yeah, you can do that in PyCharm also, but in the pro version, if I'm not wrong. Uh, but if you go down, this is Jupyter, which is very good. And I will show you how why it is good. So when you install, uh, in fact, you can install on your machine, they call Jupyter Notebook. You can also try the lab, which is which has multiple features. But if you want to try it on the browser, click here. And out of this, I want to try Jupyter Notebook. You can try it online. Okay, we'll, we'll see that in one of the videos. So we have three options. 
and there should be multiple options, but list three famous VS Code, PyCharm, and Jupyter. So let's start with VS Code. Now, how do you get VS Code on your machine? It's very simple. Go to the website. There should be an option of download for Windows and based on which OS you're working with. So I will click on download for Windows and it will download on this machine. But I will cancel it is because I already have a system set up in this machine and it's straightforward. You just say next, next, next and you will get the software. And if I want to show you, so this is how VS Code looks like. Okay, this is the first page. I will just close this and increase the font size. This VS Code. Now, how do you work with this? It's very simple. You click on this. This is where you will see the project uh, explorer where you can see project, I mean the folder, the files and stuff. Uh, this is where you can search for a particular file. This is where you can do work with source control like get. This is where you can run and debug. And this is where you can add extensions. Now, as VS Code works with multiple languages, sometimes you have to add the extension. In fact, most of the time, you have to add the extensions for a particular language or a particular feature so that you can work with it. Now, why they don't give everything in one place? Maybe, you know, they should provide all the extensions by default. See, it will make it very heavy because there are a lot of languages, a lot of tools. If they give everything, your system will die. And I don't want your system to die. In fact, they don't want your system to die. So it makes sense to not have all the extensions pre-installed. And we'll see which extensions we need. So first of all, I will just go back here. And what you do is you open a folder. So maybe in your machine, create a folder. Then open it from here. I'll go to desktop. So go with the folder which we are working with, which is Python codes. And or you can create a new one. So we already have one file here. If you don't have that file, it's okay. Just click on this button here, which is new file. And name it anything you want. Let's say demo one. And this is how it will open. I don't want any suggestions. Close it. In fact, enter it. Now, this is where you can type the code. So the what code I want to type, I will say print. And in the single quote, just say Telisco or I will say welcome to Telisco. I'll just save it. So you got your file. You got your code. And now in the terminal. Now, if you don't see a terminal here, it's fine. You can just click here. Uh, or if you see the option of terminal on the top, it's just because I have zoomed my ID. They don't have a space. So terminal, new terminal, you will see that window here. And once you are here, just say Python and the file name, which is demo one. And click on enter. You can see it says welcome to the disco. Or you can run it from here. So you can just click this and it will run. The only thing you have to do is, if you don't see this option, make sure that you have extension for your file .py. You might not say this by default. So that's how you do it. So what's the beauty about an IDE? Just type the code here. Just run the code here. You can debug here, everything in one place. Now let's talk about the extensions. So when you go here, for Python specifically, I already have those extensions. You can see installed is this theme which you're seeing here. Then PyLance, uh, Python, and Debugger. You don't have to install all. Just install this one, which is Python. So how do you do that? In the search extensions, just type Python, and you will see Python here. There's a tick here because it's already installed or because it's from Microsoft. Yeah, you will see this. There should be an option of install. Just click that, and yeah, you'll be having an extension of Python in your VS Code. It might ask you to restart your IDE. In case, uh, if it asks, just restart the IDE. Yeah, and that's how VS Code, VS Code works. Just remember this section on the left-hand side, create as many files you want. If you want to get subfolders, you can do that. And there should be a run button here. You can change the layout if you want. So you can see we have all these options and it works. And I think they also give you Copilot by default or they have to sign up for it. We'll see that later. Okay, so that's about uh, how to use VS Code here. And now it's time to work with PyCharm. So how do you get PyCharm? Go to their website, click on download. You can get the unified product or you can get the community version. And it says community version is now part of the unified product. That makes sense. So download this one. Click on download. It will download on your machine. I already have that set up in the machine. Just say next, next, next. It will be done. Now, once you have this, and if you, in fact, I, will, I would also want to show you the pricing for this. So if you are a individual, this is the pricing for you for the PyCharm Pro, $99 for first year. And uh, for teachers, students, you get it for free. So if you have the student email, 
teacher's email you can do this i'm a content creator so i got one so that's the pricing now once you have that in your machine open pycharm this is how it will look like you will not see any projects because you, you might be doing this for the first time i've done this before and that's why i see all these options here now in this also you see the option of notebook like you have in jupiter you can do that from here as well uh, but then we want to create a new project so we just click on new project here and you can name anything you want. I'm just naming it as Python project 2 because I'm not going to use the same project again. Uh, and then you mention the version of Python we are working with, which is 3.13. And click on create. Now, once you do that, you will see the project here. We have external libraries by default because it has its own way of creating a project here. Now, how do you create a file in this PyCharm? Now, first of all, in the left-hand side, we got project section. We got uh, Python console here. If you want to execute certain things, you can get the terminal, you can get the version control. On the right hand side, you see notifications, you got chat, Juni. Yeah, looks good. Now in this project, you will right click and say new Python file and you name it. And by default, you will get the extension as .py. Okay, by default, because this is PyCharm. That's the only language it supports, right? Now here, I just want to increase the font and this is why I love uh, JetBrains ID. You can just go to appearance and click on whatever number. I think 175 is a good number. It should be visible. Now here, I will just say print. I will just say hello and save and you will see an option of running here. Click on this and it runs. You can say we got hello. So we got a console and we got the place where you can type. We got project section. So this looks cooler than VS Code, but VS Code is lighter than PyCharm. So it doesn't matter which one you use. Both are amazing. Personal preference. We'll be using VS Code because a lot of people are familiar with this. If you love PyCharm, use it, no issue. Code will remain the same. And now it's time for Jupyter. Of course, we're not going to install this locally. We'll try to run it online. You can just try. If you want to install on this your machine, click on this, you will get the setup, but we'll try it on the browser, the notebook. Try it on your browser and go down, click on Jupyter Notebook. And this is what you will see. Of course, a lot of things are pre-built. What I will do is I will just click on File, New, Notebook. It will ask you for the kernel. I want to select Python, select here. Okay, now this is how it looks like. I will zoom it a bit. Now, if you want to print, this is where you type it. I will say print in single quote, hello and just click on run, you will see the output here. Now this makes sense when you want to write smaller code or if you want to see the graphs. You know, it, it's fun when you work with pandas here where you see all the graphs and stuff. So this is good, okay? So based on what you like, some people prefer Jupyter, some people prefer VS Code or PyCharm. So based on your liking, you can try it out and it works. If you want to get multiple files, you can just click here, file, create new, new notebook, and it supports a lot of shortcuts to work with it. You can also write documentation example. This particular cell has a code. This cell, you can have a markdown. You can write some notes here. So this is a good place actually to learn. But if you want to work on a big project, PyCharm or VS Code. Choice is yours. In the next video, we'll focus only on the VS Code and we'll write some code. In fact, not in the best video, but in the upcoming videos.